What's up you guys? All right, well, uh, I don't feel much like a warrior today. I am green, $5,700, but I um, overstayed my welcome a little bit. I was up 15,000 and then took a $10,000 loss. And so just like that, you know, gave back half my profit from the morning. So, you know, I'm gonna talk during the recap about that sort of psychological challenge of knowing when to walk away and it being one of the hardest things to really get good at as a trader. Cause it, on a day like today, you know, if I had kept trading, I, I probably could have made back some of the 10,000 that I had just lost, but I'd given back half my profit. So at what point do you walk away? Right? So that's what we're gonna talk about during today's recap. I'm of course gonna review the trades, which uh, there were a couple good ones, a couple not so good ones. The one I made the most on today, INO, 140 million share float, $25 stock. And uh, the one I lost the most on was um, kind of a light volume stock with no news that was risky, but you know, probably just as easily could have been a winner. I just timed it a little bit wrong. So it is what it is. So enjoy the recap today. As always, questions, comments, Leave them right down below. I'm gonna jump in. I've got summer school starting here in five minutes. So uh, those of you who are not already part of the summer school program, you can still join us. You can catch up on all the classes I've already taught as I teach them. We record them, archive them, and then you can jump in and attend the live classes as well. All right, so uh, join us over at summer school, warriortrading.com. You can check the website and uh, I'll see you guys first thing tomorrow morning, live streaming right around 9, 9.15 for the watch list. All right, see you guys in the morning. Bye everyone. All right, you guys, so we're gonna do our recap today. $5,700 in profit. And, you know, I'm up 9,000 on INO, I'm down 10,000 on Duo. So, yeah, it feels like a kind of choppy day, right? You know, I've, the bulk of my profit is from, well, you know, the biggest winner and biggest loser cancel each other out. And so then I've got these ones, which, you know, it's just not a lot of profit today uh, relative to what I've had on good green days. It's certainly better than being red, uh, which was the case on Monday, but a little disappointing because I was up 15 grand before I took a $10,000 loss on Duo. So that's frustrating just from the perspective that, you know, if I had, if, I don't know, if when when you have a day where it's like, you know, you're up 2,000, then you lose 1,000. Then you're up 3,000, then you lose 1,000. Then you're up 4,000, then you lose 1,000. Then you're kind of like, yeah, I'm finishing up 5,700. I'm finishing kind of at the top. The whole day was sort of a grind, but hey, I'm walking away at the top. Whereas today, I was up 4,000 on CTIB pre-market. Then I was up um, about 12,000 after HHT or 9,000. Then after a couple of trades on INO, I was up 12, 13, 14, 15. And then I gave back more than half my profit on my duo loss. So this one is annoying for me because I tried to do a dip trade on it, uh, tried to buy right here for a bounce off the VWAP, got halted going down. It flushed down here. I actually added um, down here. I didn't sell, I, I added right down here. Well, actually, no, I did stop out somewhere and then I added back. I think I stopped out right here first one minute candle popped up to 13.95, then dropped back down and I stopped out at 13. Then I got back in uh, right here at 13 and it rips up. I added for the break of 14. It pops up here to a high of 14.50 and then I stopped out right here for a small loss because I had added. So, you know, it's just kind of annoying to have uh, a couple choppy trades like that you know, as I look at this, it was probably better to do a dip trade on it than to try to do a, um, a, a long for, you know, at the highs, because it was so extended. It's just that it didn't really hold that dip. So I took too much size. That was my problem. And today I was trading with pretty big size in general. INO, you can see this one's a more expensive stock. Biggest size on this today, I think was 15 or 16,000 shares. So pretty big positions on this. We had a long right here for a five minute opening range breakout. It's a gap and go setup. 
squeezed up to a high of 2387. Big rejection, tried to do a bounce off the VWAP, failed there as well. Then got back in at 23 right here, rips up um, whatever this is to 2330, kind of choppy here, stops me out and then comes back up and I'm not trading it again because I'm kind of annoyed that I keep getting stopped out on it. Um, wins, W-I-N-S. The only reason I traded Duo was because Wins uh, had made this big move. And on the day, the last day that Wins made a big move, Duo also made a big move. Now, Wins is currently halted going down. It's probably going to open at like 30 bucks because that's what this one seems to do. It, it goes crazy going up, then halts coming down. No trades on it, too risky. Duo, I was willing to take a stab on, but, you know, screwed that up. And wins, probably the only trade I would consider would be a, a dip trade. If we look back at the last time this happened, you know, it squeezed up higher and higher and higher on light volume. And then when it finally uh, resumed, it halted one more time going down before giving a really nice pop from 26 back up towards $36, a $10 a share pop. But I'm not gonna stick around to trade that. I At this point, I, I've hit my sort of circuit breaker for needing to stop, which is that I've given back half my profit. And I you know, probably should have stopped before because I, I had two losses on Duo. I was down 8,000 on it and then I took one more and lost another 2,000. So I probably actually should have stopped when I was down on that first one. But anyways, so uh, kind of, you know, yeah, hey, it's a green day. That's great, but could have been a lot better and that last trade got me which is sometimes the case so ctib was the leading gapper this morning in the in the entire market seventy six hundred dollars on in profit on that gap and go setup with the first trade being pre-market we had a nice little breakout where was it right around here for the break of 555 squeezed up to six pulled back at the open it ripped up to five sold off hard but i did a couple dip trades on this that actually worked out nicely you can see a nice dip uh, was right down here. So that was the first one. HHT was uh, the second leading gapper. I took a long out of the gates on this at about $1.15. 20,000 shares, squeezed up to $1.24. I sold it and $1,100 profit. So with those two trades, I was up 86, 8,700. Then INO was the next one. This was a one minute setup right through here. And since I already had a cushion of $8,600, I was a little more aggressive on this trade and got $4,000 profit on my first trade on it. So that got me up to about 12,000 on the day, which is a really solid day. So I was feeling, oh, yeah, there you go. There's wins um, doing that bounce, halting going up, predictable. And I'm gonna be sitting on the sidelines on it. I can't afford the risk anymore. So uh, it is what it is. INO back here, um, you know, it speaks to the fact that these are gonna go with or without you, right? So they're gonna go without you if you've knocked yourself out for the day by hitting your max loss or whatever the case is. So, and that's that's the case for me. So this was the breakout right here. Nice trade from 22.55 up to 23, pulled back, pop up over 23, a little continuation. Then a bounce off the VWAP here. And again, then a break of VWAP, choppy through this area sold off, weak, then it comes back up here, uh, but was a little bit hard to trade. So, you know, $9,400 is not bad. And uh, in between all of that, I did have the trade on SINT, which was a uh, $2,000 loss. That was an attempt to go long for the break over 250, which was right here. And as you can see, that failed and dropped back down. I took 20,000 shares of that as well. So uh, with that, with these right here, I was up 15 grand coming into you know 11 or so, 10.30. And we had wins, which was ripping up, which I didn't trade. But then when I saw Duo starting to open up, I thought, all right, you know, this, this one might give me um, a setup. And you see it was squeezing here. It got halted at 12.86, it resumed. I took a starter, but I got, I botched the entry because I was also trading INO at the same time. So I jumped over, press shift one, and I was in at 14, added at 14.34, and I was like, then it looked like it was gonna do a false halt. As you can see right here, it dipped down. So when it came back up, I was like, no, 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 I'm out of this, I'm selling. So I got out, 
uh, for a small profit. It then resumes, rips up here, and that's when I was like, all right, I'm gonna do a dip trade. Tried to buy this dip right here, it pops up, then it flushes back down. Uh, looks like it's going into a halt, I added, and then I was caught in a halt going down. It resumes lower, I added, it popped up for a second, back to 14, I was in at about 13.95. I was looking for it to rip higher, it didn't. It flushed down to 13 and I lost $8,000 on that drop right there. Then I got back in right here and rather than selling here, I added right here, it rips up to 14.50. I was looking for the break of 14.50 and then maybe a retest of the highs and then I stopped out as it dropped. I don't know if it was right here, or I think it was actually right here that I stopped out. So two losses on that one, and with that, I gave back half my profit. So gotta throw in the towel, and rules are rules. You know, it's it being disciplined enough to know when to walk away is one of the hardest things of day trading, because this is a day where I could say, man, I should have done, I should have I just done that trade on wins. I thought it was gonna dip and bounce, and it did. And now I'm gonna you know, sit here and watch it go to 48.50 and I didn't take it. Or INO, this thing ends up ripping um, you know, after I finish trading through uh, the highs and you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't trade that. I could have traded this right here and I probably could have made back a couple thousand dollars. Could have probably got myself back to up 10 grand, maybe even back to up 15 grand. However, I've already given back half my profit. If I have another trade that goes wrong, Next thing I know, I'm up only 2,000. Then I'm up only 1,000. Then I'm red on the day. And I don't want to have days where I'm giving back profit to the market. So, you know, every day you either leave money on the table, you give back some profit. So today, I, I did give back some profit that I had already locked up because I was up 15 and now I'm up only 5,000. However, um, you know, although that's disappointing, I'm still net positive versus where I was at 9.15 this morning. You know, at 9, 9 a.m. this morning, I didn't have this $5,700. So although this isn't as much as 15,000, I need to be grateful for it. I don't wanna start getting emotional or aggressive and then end up actually going red on the day where I'm giving back profit. I'm actually giving back profit from the previous day, right? So it's very hard to be grateful for 5,700 when you were just up 15,000. And I understand that is, that's applicable on any scale. It's hard to be happy about being up $57 when you were just up 150. It's hard to feel good about being up, you know, 500 bucks when you were just up 1,100. But you have to remind yourself, hey, I've got more money in my pocket than I had two hours ago. I've done my job, I'm walking away green. Maybe I didn't do as well today as I could have. Tomorrow is a new day. I'll be back at it tomorrow. And hopefully tomorrow, you know, we, I don't know, we see a little bit uh, better momentum. The fact is today, CTIB, uh, you know, this was garbage. It, it, it was pr nice pre-market up to six. That was the top. There was, I think, a 300,000 share seller at six or whatever this was. And, and then flushed all the way back down now under $4. So, you know, that's disappointing. That was our leading gapper, HHT. Leading gapper also, second leading gapper also failed. What did we have on Monday? S-I-N-T, leading gapper on Monday, and this one failed. And this is back, um, let's see, back here on Monday. So leading gapper failed. Um, did the kind of red to green, but anyways. Leading gapper failed, EVOK, also the leading gapper on Monday. You can see that big red, red candle. So when the two leading gappers fail, it's not a good sign for momentum. Fortunately, INO, which was not one of the leading gappers, but was a continuation setup from the previous day and is a higher float. INO has a float of 100 million shares, 142 million shares. So it's a little outside my price range and a little outside my float range. However, I was willing to take the trades on it uh, because it had volatility. Volatility is opportunity. So, and I made 9,400 on it. So thank goodness I did step up and trade that because otherwise I'd be red right on the day. So that's it for me. Uh, a green day, not as big of a green day as I'd like, but you know, Monday was red, 10,000. Yesterday I was up 62,000. Today I'm up 5,700. You know, so it feels like a little bit of a hot and cold market where yesterday was hot, today's a little colder. And I suppose maybe I'd be feeling differently if I had jumped in duo 
earlier, but the fact is it's not currently, you know, when I'm doing my midday recap, I like, when I'm seeing the stocks I was trading are still going without me and I've just decided to step back and, and take my profit. So the fact that I'm looking at Duo and it's not still going up, the fact that I'm looking at INO and, well, actually this one is still pretty good. Um, but CTIB, SINT, and HHT, INO is the only one that really still looks good. So, you know, just the fact that only one out of the four that I've five tra that I've traded is still going up is, you know, kind of indicative that we're seeing a little bit of a choppier day. So it's incredible how momentum can shift on a dime, how one day can be super hot and the next day it's cold. So why is that? And I think that that it, it's a question really that gets to the heart of the market. It's uh, emotion. So when you see a couple stocks that are up 100, 200% and they start, um, you know, they start really opening up, traders start to get greedy, they start to get excited, they jump on that momentum and it becomes this feeding frenzy. You know, you put a, you know, you're looking, I don't know, to do like a, uh, what do they call it? When you go like looking to swim in a shark cage and they throw some fish in the water, you know, they, they throw some fish in and all of a sudden the sharks are swim over. They're like, oh, there's something going on over here. And they get really excited. And then they, one shark sees one eating and the other was like, oh, I want some of that too. And all of a sudden it's a feeding frenzy. And if everyone goes out there and there's nothing in the water that gets them excited, you'll have nothing to do. There's no, there's no, there's no shark swimming around the cage because nothing is happening. So it's these initial stocks on the gap scanner with news that are kind of those, you know, pieces of bait that allow traders to feed. <laughs> they get us excited. So that is, um, you know, today we had a couple, but then they didn't really hold up. So I think traders probably pretty quickly got a little nervous. INO is probably out of a lot of people's price range. The float's a little higher. So not surprising that it's a little choppier. And Duo and Wins, well, they're hard to manage risk on, so probably a lot of people, you know, rightfully so, said, ah, I'm gonna steer clear on those. So uh, it, it's a little bit of a choppier day, but tomorrow we could have some really awesome setups pre-market and, you know, momentum is back and it's just super strong. I would wonder if maybe traders are learning a little bit, um, you know, some lessons on over-trading kind of poor quality markets, because. You know, when you have a, a choppy market and you overtrade that, you know, it can be it can be bad. So maybe people are smartening up a little bit versus some of the action we've seen in the last uh, few weeks where stocks were just irrationally strong. And as I said earlier today, this is a market that's tough because it can, um, you know, you can get rewarded for chasing and kind of not really being disciplined, not really following rules. Whereas in a colder market, you start chasing stocks because you're red and trying to get back to green, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. You're gonna end up tripling your loss. It's just gonna compound. And you're gonna be like, I don't get it. This worked back in May and June. Why is it not working now? Different market conditions. So it's a sort of frustrating thing with trading that you have to adapt your strategy to the market. You can't really just come in every single day and trade the exact same way. I mean, you can a little bit, but same as driving a car around a racetrack. You've got to ease on and off the throttle based on the current conditions. So, you know, is it a dry track? Is it a wet track? Is it snowing? Is, you know, what's, what are the conditions? And then that helps you make the decision of how I'm going to adapt for today. So that's, that's where we're sitting here, $5,700, um, not, uh, ter actually maybe like the second worst day of the month for me, but, uh, probably feels a little bit worse because I was up 15 and then gave it back. So a good lesson there on knowing when to walk away. Gave back a little profit, but I'm still walking away with more in my pocket than I had starting at uh, whatever it was uh, nine o'clock this morning. Okay, so students, we're gonna jump into the classroom. Summer school's gonna start here in just about 10 minutes. So I'll see you in the classroom. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Help us hit 750,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button and stay tuned and check out some of my other awesome uploads right here on YouTube.